question. Are Caucasians structurally superior to people of other races? Are men superior to women? Does being civilized give you license to mess with nature and to hurt animals for profit? Uh, this is Alex with Trash Filmatic. We're headed into very murky waters today with a 1977 film from infamous uh, filmmaker Ruggero Deodato. This is Last Cannibal World. Now, before I start sharing my thoughts on this film, I have a question to you listeners. Have you seen Last Cannibal World? Have you seen any other Italian cannibal movies? If so, uh, do you like them? I would love nothing better than to get a comment from you. Let me know if you like Last Cannibal World or other films from this subgenre. What is it that makes you enjoy them? I would love to have a little list like A, B, C aspects which make you enjoy this movie. And I would love to know how many times have you actually watched Last Cannibal World or if you have another favorite jungle epic please let me know down below in the comments thanks okay i'm not sure i've got the tools for this i i'm not sure i can do this movie justice but hell you voted for it i watched it so let's talk about it last cannibal world was conceived as a follow-up to umberto lenz's film man from deep river both movies feature actor Ivan Razimov. Both movies tell the basic story of a white Western man getting lost in the jungle somewhere in Southeast Asia and interacting with the locals, let's put it that way. I'm just going to give you a little bit of my background to Last Cannibal World. I saw this movie many years ago. I was pretty much a kid when I saw it. I must have been 16, maybe even 15 I, uh, I've still got the tape. How did I even get into watching cannibal films, movies like Cannibal Holocaust, Cannibal Fear Rocks? It was a review, it was a movie mag, it was before I had internet at home, and I remember reading little reviews where these films were mentioned as true heart-hitting shockers. And being a teenager, I was it was a kind of a rite of passage thing, watching things like violent shit, faces of death, and then obviously... These kind of movies like Cannibal Holocaust obviously sounded like something that could mess you up and being in the tender age where, where you still live with your parents and they look after you and you're looking for ways to uh, reaffirm yourself and to show that you're actually able to take stuff. So that was general curiosity and the desire to challenge myself. That was how I got into watching these movies. When it came to Last Cannibal World, I remember being pretty much bored throughout the whole movie. That's all I remember. And recently I, I dug up the tape and I uh, stuck it into my VCR. And it's pretty degraded. I gotta say it's a bootleg, so it doesn't look good anymore. So I had to find another way of uh, watching uh, Last Cannibal World. The way this movie begins... It makes me wonder, who the hell starts a movie like that? You would think if you were to make a film, you'd want people to get hooked. You would try and show some really promising stuff up front so that people would uh, stick with the film and watch it uh, through to the end. But hey, this is an Italian uh, exploitation film. You have to remember, those films were made in a very different uh, way. So there was the pre-sale system, so the producers went to fill markets with just a tagline and a poster and they collected money bits of money from distributors with just a tagline and depending on how much money they collected they would then make the film so before they even wrote the script before they even cast anybody they already made a profit so obviously that left them just with the task of finding a competent director to helm the movie as cheaply as possible, as quickly as possible, within a fixed time frame, delivering a product which would then be given to those distributors who have uh, put some money up front. And whether this film went on to be become a hit internationally, whether it went on to make a profit at the box office or not, that was not the film producer's problem because he would not really partake of that anymore. He was happy, okay, he has the pre-sales, he's found the right director, he's found Ruggiero Deodato, a good professional, for example. He's gonna b deliver a product 
on the budget without uh, going into overtime with his shoot. And that's it. He's made a profit. That's good. So this is why these kind of movies, movies like Last Cannibal World, watching them today, they have very odd pacing. They actually put all the boring stuff in the beginning because they only shot so much footage. Just bits of gross stuff that would look good on a poster on the, in the trailer and the rest is very much debatable if it's even uh, watchable but the movie has to have uh, you know a certain length like 85 minutes 90 minutes 75 minutes at the very least 78 minutes so let's cannibal world the way this movie begins i just cannot describe to you my disappointment really I'm not speaking about animal violence. I'm not speaking about the morally reprehensible aspect here. I'm just speaking about entertainment value, which is nil. So yeah, Last Cannibal World does not begin very promisingly. There is this shaky uh, footage of this plane flying over a rainforest and we eventually see our protagonist, the people inside the plane. It's these two American guys and their Asian pilot and the pilot's wife or girlfriend. So these two uh, American protagonists, they are pretty much interchangeable. One's got a beard and glasses and the other one is clean shaven and wears a Panama hat. So that's pretty much how you can describe them. Already the film starts to drag. It barely just started. We only just saw the opening credits and there is absolutely no tension whatsoever. Whatever they're saying, the dialogue is so stupid, it's pointless to even uh, quote it. So what happens is uh, once they landed, for whatever reason, they choose to wander into the jungle. Even though they have themselves uh, said that uh, it's dangerous, the jungle is cruel and takes no prisoners, the moment they land, they find an excuse to run off into the jungle and get themselves lost. And these are our civilized protagonists, okay? They are our identification figures in the story i don't know it's the first six or seven minutes of the movie and i'm already getting sick of it then comes the animal violence i'm not going to describe what happens the scene featuring one animal eating or hurting the other animal it's quite long it's like uh, it's like padding then the movie resumes the story resumes what for what it's worth our protagonists our caucasian explorers make further dumb choices before you know it one of them has disappeared and the other one has to fend for himself and he gets trapped by cannibals in the umberto lenzi film man from deep river the main protagonist was found by the natives wearing his diving suit and they thought that he was some kind of a half man half fish and in this movie in last cannibal world since the natives realized that the protagonist i think his name is robert he's um come from an airplane then he must be half man half bird okay so they try and come up with this ritual where they suspend him from the top of the cave and then they ritualistically let him drop drop down and they're quite surprised that he can't fly without his airplane so this is the kind of humor that you can expect from a uh, last cannibal world yeah it's hilarious the movie is hilarious especially if you think about the points of reference in this movie who can we identify with in last cannibal world we have the protagonist who's not very intelligent and then we have the cannibals, the, the natives who are just portrayed as complete, more or less like animals. So this is your movie. There is no identification figure for you. If you're a masochist, I've got to say the one thing that became uh, apparent to me is that maybe in some ways Last Cannibal World can satisfy masochistic urges in the audience because the protagonist through his own stupidity is subjected to a number of really humiliating situations and rituals these rituals are displayed uh, in great detail so (laughs) whether you like it or not a part of you tries on the situation it makes you wonder what you would feel like and i think in a way these movies these kind of movies cater to this latent masochistic side in the viewer I gotta say, Last Cannibal World tried my patience. Visually, it isn't a very distinguished film. I appreciate that it must have been extremely tough making a film in the real rainforest. 
in the 1970s with uh, analog equipment, which is very heavy and cumbersome. I imagine that shooting conditions were far from brilliant. On the one hand side, I've got to compliment Diodato's crew in that they took pains to uh, make some shots look much nicer than they really had to be. Like there are some actually some tracking shots in the jungle. They actually must have laid tracks and put the camera on the dolly to get some pretty stylish shots considering they're in the middle of nowhere. But on the other hand side, there just isn't enough interesting visual motives in, in the forest. It's all just leaves and shrubbery and stock footage of crocodiles. So there are also quite a few intrusive zooms which don't really make make the movie look all that beautiful. The colors aren't particularly interesting. So visually, I was surprised. Even though it's shot in scope, it's a panoramic movie, I didn't find it very stylish or well composed. I know that Deodato can do much better. I think... Uh, On every level, I've seen Diodato do better. And going back to the protagonist being unlikable, they're not just unlikable because they make a lot of blatantly uh, silly choices. It's also because they basically do not have a personality, so it's very difficult to identify with them. If you think about Ruggiero Diodato's movie House on the Edge of the Park, the protagonist played by David Hess, is is a psychopath, is a murderer and a rapist. And yet that character is in some ways easier to identify with because there is enough there in the story for the actor to work with, to make this character come to life. And however degenerate and mean the character may be, he comes to life on the screen. And sadly, there is nothing of the sort in Last Cannibal World. I've got to say that film is uh, very static and dull because it's very difficult for the viewer to inhabit the story. And also knowing how good Deodato can be with camera, I think his uh, films like Dial Help, Atlantis Interceptors, House on the Edge of the Park have excellent visuals, great cinematography. But when when he's out in the jungle, I think uh, Deodato is uh, somehow so fascinated with uh, whatever he finds there in, in the raw nature that he kind of forgets to uh, frame his movies nicely. I'm not sure what it is, but even his later film, like Cut and Run, it's a, it's a nice enough movie from the production value point of view, but it's completely lifeless, like it doesn't have a pulse. And this is also my complaint, my chief complaint about Last Cannibal World. Okay, it's got a stupid, idiotic, unnecessary rapes, and it's got tons and tons of animal cruelty which I just don't know I'm not gonna say anything about that but why is it so badly paced why is there such pretentious lame dialogue and why don't the characters behave like they've got brains so that kind of makes them not that much better than the supposedly savage natives yeah I guess my review is gradually turning into a negative review but there you go and I'm afraid a director like Ruggiero Diodato who's a gifted filmmaker doesn't really operate to his maximum capacity within the parameters of a cannibal movie this is my impression he's not my favorite director but I acknowledge that he can achieve excellent results if he's given the good material to work from but I'm afraid material in Last Cannibal World is lacking I gotta say back in the day when I first encountered Last Cannibal World I didn't have as much trouble enduring those um, violent scenes and I didn't question the film's uh, moral core. I wasn't really much of a critical thinker at the time and also it was a different time. I'm really curious, in about 25 years from now, what's it going to be like watching a movie like Last Cannibal World in 2050? I actually get an idea sometimes that this genre, the cannibal genre featuring animal violence might be completely banned again. It might be made very scarce. I'm going to repeat my request to you, dear listeners. If you do like cannibal movies, please let me know what it is that you enjoy about them. Be specific. Mention two or three aspects which attract you to these movies. And do mention how often you rewatch these films. Thanks a lot. That was Alex with Trash Film Addict. Bye-bye.